You're watching Theme Park Worldwide where we're here at SeaWorld Orlando in Florida. The sun is shining and today we're going to get back on all of our favourite rides here in the park. Including Mako. I absolutely love that coaster. One of the best coasters in Florida. It's a B&M Hyper and I absolutely love it. Fantastic layout on there for a 200 foot tall roller coaster. Along with that you got an awesome flyer here as well from B&M. Uh, that is of course Manta. Oh I find Manta a bit too intense. Oh it'd be good to get on there today. I tell you what it's a hot one so that'll feel so really hot. forced for today uh, and along with that as well you got some other great rides Kraken Flawless Coaster which I love we'll check out the construction taking place on their new family B&M coaster opening next year we'll get back on Icebreaker now there's no comfort collars and so much more uh, but if you haven't already make sure you check out yesterday's vlog we had our first ever rides on Pipeline the Surf Coaster and also reviewed that for you as well with on ride POVs and the good thing is the POVs continue today uh, because we can film on all the rides oh, here that's so good we love when we can take you all Along. We've also got some water rides today, haven't we? Oh, we have. The Infinity Falls, which is the rapids, and also Journey to Atlantis, uh, which is a water coaster uh, with some outdoor and dark ride scenes. I'll tell you what, it's a hot one today. It feels like the hottest day of our trip. It really does. But I'll tell you what, the weather's been fantastic for us so far with our Orlando trip. And there's the lighthouse down here at the entrance. And yeah, I always love coming back to this park and getting on some of the best coasters in Florida. <laughs> Now, of course, as soon as you walk into the park, you see the amazing skyline. You've got Manta, which is right in front of you when you come in. And of course, it makes a great entrance coaster. However, that means it gets busy. So I never recommend doing Manta first. Head right down to the back of the park for lower crowds. So it took us about 10 minutes to walk down here to the back of the park, ready for our ride on Maker. And I do love all the theming around here, kind of like a shipwreck that the track kind of breaks through, which looks awesome. Yeah, this opening in 2016, top speed of 73 miles an hour, 200 foot tall, and it's an excellent ride. How long are we looking on the wait times? Let's have a look around this corner. What are we on? Is that five? Five minutes. Oh, that's what we want for Mako. Of course, I mentioned this yesterday in our pipeline video, and I'll say it again just here. If you've got anything bigger than a bum bag, fanny pack, it does need to go in the locker. And yeah, it's $3 for single use, or you can have one all day for $10. You excited? Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. I love Mako. Absolutely brilliant ride, this is. Let's go and ride BLM Hyper Coaster. Oh, that's what I like to see, nice and quiet. Straight onto the station. We've got a dispatch, five minute wait, and we're on the front row of Mako. down now over the water, love this turn around. Woo. Oh, that is beautiful. Amazing design for that ride as well. They got so much out of the way out there for a coach that's 200 foot. Brilliant. Well, it's such an excellent ride and with no key, we thought, well, every route not to have another go. We've got to go around again, it's awesome. Hey, and we're down here at the 
about now. Thought we'd put the wrist strap on for you all as well. Oh, getting blinded by the sun here. Oh, no, it's a hot day. You know what? I fancy a water ride next, maybe. Oh, there. No. Normally get around and get the coasters done, but I'm thinking maybe doing Infinity Falls next, you know. Oh, no. I mean, water rides are going to get busy today. Here's a look down the lift still. <laughs> Fun fact for you, if you look over in the distance, you have a great look at Walt Disney World. You can see Spaceship Earth. Here we go. Whoa! Mako here at SeaWorld Orlando. Two back to back rides there on Mako, and one at the front, one at the back. How was your ride? Oh, I absolutely love Mako. It's such a fantastic ride. The airtime on there is so good. Some really good airtime. You get some great floats going into the elements as well, especially down there at the back. First drop's really good as well. And like I said, I know 200 foot's pretty tall for a coaster, but there's much taller hypers out there. But still, this is one of the best. What they did with the layouts on this is phenomenal. Mako is one of my favorite hyper coasters. It's just so good. I love the out and back layout. I love the hammerhead turn as well. I think that's really great. And you can't go wrong with the BNM hyper. What I love with this one as well is the unique ending. Instead of just a couple of small airtime hills, you do this big kind of turn round over the water, and that's a brilliant finale to the ride. Well, we're hoping to get a ride there on Infinity Falls next, but yeah, it's not quite ready yet for the day, so we'll have to come back. We'll head round to Icebreaker first. But yeah, here's a look at it. Charlotte's doing a happy dance over here now. I'm so pleased. Well, don't worry, you've not escaped yet. Oh, no. It just would have been good to get this in. I mean, it's a Saturday when we're here today. It's busier. This is going to get quite a queue later on, Infinity Falls, but we'll, uh, we'll see how we go. I tell you what though, pipeline looks fantastic over the water here, doesn't it? I do love the off-ride look of it. And like I say, make sure you check out yesterday's vlog here on Theme Park Worldwide. We have some rides on there and of course, share our full review of the new edition. Last year's new ride there, of course, was Icebreaker over here, Premier Ride Skyrocket. And yeah, with this, it's got quite a good layout launched. However, it had comfort colors on the trains, which did make it a little bit awkward and a bit uncomfortable, uh, which is quite funny really with the name. However, they've now been removed, which is fantastic. So I'm looking forward to getting back on here without those now. Uh, I think it'll be much better than it was previously. So yeah, it's gonna have a ride here on Icebreaker. I tell you what, they just keep on building here. Don't they back to back coaster years? It's crazy. So it was advertised 20 minutes for Icebreaker. I'd say we waited about 25 minutes there, so a little bit over the advertised few time, but still not too bad for a Saturday. Look at these trains now, they look so much better without the comfort collars. So they kind of came over a bit like over the shoulder restraints really, but they were really loose, completely pointless. I'm glad that they took them away. Should make it much more enjoyable and also easier to step into the train as well. Here on Icebreaker, let's go and ride. Well, it was a little bit easier to get comfortable on this. However, it still took a bit of time to step into the train. Yeah, because you've kind of got this bar down here at the bottom, which isn't amazing. But still, I'm glad they brought the uh, switch track on this. Yeah, of course, it means it can run two trains. So we now move across onto the launch track. And yeah, you get three launches on this, which is good. What a great view looking out over the water. Backwards first, let's go. Hey! Up the spike. This is a good launch now, it took me by surprise. Hey. We're not playing it, we're going backwards. Here we go. Hey.
a couple of nice bits of airtime. Certainly a better ride experience without having the comfort collars, but this digs in quite a lot, doesn't oh it? Oh my god, it is digging in so much. Are you in pain there? Yeah. Are you? Oh, look it's at that. so tight. Yeah, I mean, you got a seatbelt under there oh. as well. There we go. Icebreaker. Family thrill carries around class that one has. Right, footage there from Icebreaker. It's got a 52 mile an hour top speed on there, which is quite surprising for a coaster of its kind. And you know what? I do really like the launch on there. The launches on there are great, but the train design, I really don't like it. My restraint was so tight. I mean, it is better now without the comfort collars, a bit less faff. However, I'm still not a huge fan of that coaster. Uh, for me, again, I don't think the layout's that strong. However, there's some nice bits of airtime, but you don't really get to enjoy them because of the restraints. The restraints are just so tight, so you don't get to enjoy it. Yeah, but uh, it's okay. It it's not an amazing coaster, in my opinion, but it adds something else. I class it more family thrill instead of full-on thrill. Even though it's got quite a high top speed, um, I don't think it's too aggressive, that ride. You know, I think it's just a nice addition to the park and um, to kind of fill a gap, really, um, what they need. You know, something, instead of a massive thrill coaster, just something a little bit less Less than that here at the park but uh, still it was good to get on there and yeah I won't really want to wait any longer than we did for it I do always enjoy this pathway that leads over the water here you get some really nice views looking out the skyline over the park and yeah of course we still got Kraken just over there journey to Atlantis Manta and yeah lots of other attractions to enjoy and experience here today at SeaWorld as well and of course the surf coaster pipeline Looks really good walking down over here as well. It's nice now because you can stand here and all the way around you can just see coasters. That really is the coaster capital of Orlando now here at SeaWorld. Time for some lunch then now. And of course, with us being here at a SeaWorld park, it does mean extortionate food prices. We said this is Bush Gardens, but uh, yeah, it's actually just cost me $20 for these chicken tenders and fries. That's without a drink, I just had a free cup of water. I can't believe it. So I actually went for the kids' mac and cheese, which is the fries and the mac and cheese. If I'd have had these as two sides, it would have cost me $20. But because I had it as a kids' meal, it was $9.99. So just order a kids' meal. And literally, it's the exact same portion. There you go, that's what you want to do. That's the hack. A side of fries, $10. That is mad. And of course, you've also got the 5% surcharge. I mean, I have included that in these prices, but still, that is extortionate, isn't that it? That is so expensive. Love the coasters here, but the food is just extortionate. Well, my food was all right there. Nothing special, especially for $20, but still had to eat something so we can keep on riding here at SeaWorld. And yeah, construction's underway on another new roller coaster set to open in 2024. It's going to be a B&M family roller coaster. And we're kind of in the area where Antarctica Empire of the Penguin used to be. If you remember, it was a trackless dart ride. It was pretty good, actually. But you know what? It didn't last very long, which I'm really surprised about. I, think I only did it once. Yeah, it used to be located in a big show building around here. And yeah, this new coaster looks like it's going to have indoor and outdoor sections. So yeah, that's why all this is blocked off at the moment for construction. I tell you what, though, they keep investing so heavy in new roller coasters here like if anything they could do with a new dart ride now just to really kind of freshen the lineup up but still another coaster coming in coast capital of orlando another one just over here then journey to atlantis this is where it all started really i mean look at this very well themed building and yeah i always enjoy a ride on this some mac rides water coaster with some really good theming on here and as much as there's not as much emphasis on the storyline on here anymore it's still a great ride i mean look at the facade on that the journey to Atlantis. Yeah, we're gonna go and get in the queue. It looks very busy. Oh, and all the years I've been coming to SeaWorld, I've never waited more than like 10 minutes for this. It's all the way back here to the entrance. Of course, it is a Saturday today, so it's expected to be busy. And yeah, the reason why we've come on a Saturday, if you're wondering, we wouldn't normally, and that is because Pipeline has had a lot of downtime this week, and we wanted to make sure that we came on a day when it was up. We were planning to come yesterday, which would have been Friday. It would have been much quieter, but then the weather was terrible. We had a massive storm, didn't we, yesterday? We did. So if we'd have come yesterday, we wouldn't have got on anything because of the yeah, so it's one of those. It's ended up that we're coming today. We yeah, have this is a big queue. It's advertised 30. I think this could be at least 60 to 90 minutes. So we've ended up waiting a total of 52 minutes for our ride here on Journey to Atlantis. Not quite as bad as I was expecting, but a lot of express coming down. 
What's quite interesting is we're not using the off-road either at the moment. You know, off-road here in this station, whereas before, you know, actually got a separate off-road area. Let's go and ride. So then, yeah, it's not as good without the story in there now, but I do still like the theming. There we go, around the top. Oh, the next lift oh. Quite bright when you come back out here. There's Aquatica over there as well, which is the water park here at SeaWorld. Make our way up to the top. I do love all the theme building and structure around there. It always looks fantastic. The bottom of the hill. Here we go. Oh my God. Oh. <laughs> you alright that? So hey. That was a good splash. I do like this music around here. This is the drop that always gets people it's really small, but oh yeah, if you're on the front, it comes all the way over. Turn around on Mako over there as well. Doesn't look like much this one, but it always gets you on the front. We should be all right down here at the back. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Literally comes right over at the front. I do like all the cascading waterfalls, always looks the part. A big drop isn't it that one when you look at it and that's the thing from the front it looks like there's just one lift hill and one drop but of course around the back here this ride has a bit of a surprise which i do like today we'll be drying about five minutes but yeah, i do love that little surprise down here at the back you really know that we're saying that's journey to atlantis yeah very strange not using the offload normally you get off in here yeah not anymore 
here we go. Here's a look at where you'd normally get off. Yeah, very interesting how they're not using the offload. Maybe is it staffing cuts? I'm not too sure. I mean, they used to have to have a staff member down here. It's possibly so, but yeah, you can see they've put this kind of themed tarpaulin up at the side. Quite interesting. Well, it was definitely worth going on journey to Atlantis, especially on such a hot day. We waited quite a while for it, but you got to think it is a Saturday, and for a water ride, that isn't too bad, to be honest. Like, it was worth going on. I'm quite wet, I am. It was yeah. good, I enjoyed it, and what a lot of people don't realise is that surprise drop. I forgot that that was even there, I was took by surprise. Yeah, because when you look at it out the front, you see the big drop and one lift hill, and people think that's it. But now you've got all the dark ride scenes, and then, of course, that S-Bend drop, which is actually really good. It jolts you proper forwards. Um, but yeah, with that ride, it has seen better days. Of of course, you used to have the storyline throughout the indoor scene. I don't really know why they took that away because you've got all the speakers still in there. The set design's great and the lighting, but no backstory now. You can also just give people a bit of dialogue of what's going on in those scenes as you're going through. Yeah, it would cost nothing to really do that again. If they get in contact with me, I'll do some audio for them. I'll do a voiceover. Uh, but no, I do really like the ride. I've got a soft spot for it. It opened in 1998, built by Matt Rides, and this was really the first big ride to open at this whole park. So yeah, look at it now with all the big coasters they've got. This is where it started. And it's a good themed experience journey to Atlantis. I do feel like though, uh, they need to get that offload back on again. We was on the uh, waiting area there for about six or seven minutes. It literally took ages to get off. It felt like we'd done the whole ride and then done it again, waiting on the offload. I reckon it was on the offload area for longer than I the actual so ride. Too. But uh, it was great getting back on there. Up next, we've got Kraken. This is a flawless coaster. And uh, yeah, with this one, it's got a bit better capacity. It looks pretty quiet from what we've seen. Oh, and up next we're going on Kraken just here. Advertised wait of 20 minutes, not too bad at all. A couple of trains in service out of my journey. And yeah, I do love the entrance sign for Kraken. Flawless coaster, opened 23 years ago in year 2000 and features seven inversions. Let's go and have a ride on Kraken. Oh, I think 20 minutes is probably overestimated for this. Straight up into the station, love this view. Oh, it looks so nice after the repaint as well. Here it comes. Oh, Mako in the shot there as well. That was great. Let's go. And we literally walked straight onto Kraken. And we're here on the back row. Favourite place to ride this. Front's good with the views. Back for the intensity. Nice little B&M free drop. Hey. Yeah, I'm a big fan of the new colour scheme. Don't get me wrong though, it does look quite similar to the Hulk now. Down at Islands of Adventure. Awesome views of Mako off to the left hand side as well. flawless coaster makes more sense when you're on the front row but when you're further back you don't notice it that much because the wheel guards are quite big like you can see just here in front of us but here's the nice little feature it means you get a bit more breeze and it's better than having kind of big sides coming up here as well which on the standard sit downs and here we go what a view over see all the land oh cracking Nice portal today. Woo! Woo! Whee! Oh! It's a paper roll. Woo! Oh, you got some whip on the back. Woo! Oh, I love cracking. It's so forceful. Let's go into another vertical loop. Oh, down into the mouth of the beast. And a course through. Oh, I love that. Oh, and you agree about it. I love with your Mako as well. That is a brilliant ride. I love a good old school BM. Yeah, they don't build them quite like they used to. I mean, that was amazing. I really enjoyed that. 
absolutely fantastic. My footage there from the back row of Kraken. How was that for you? Oh, that is so intense. It's not a coaster for me, that one. Oh, especially in this Florida heat as well. Like, you really do feel the intensity on there. Fantastic layout there. I mean, of course, this was their first big thrill coaster that they put in 23 years ago here at SeaWorld. And blindly, they've come a long way since with all the other additions. But this is a fantastic ride. And like I say, I'm really pleased with the repaint on here. Um, now, don't get me wrong, it's not the smoothest coaster, but it's aggressive. It's got some good force which I really like. I do have to say, I absolutely absolutely love the track colour, it looks so good off-road, even though I don't personally like the coaster, I can see why people would because of the intensity. Yeah, it looks a lot better than it used to, like with the turquoise style colour scheme, I really like this, like I say, it just looks similar to the Hulk, um, down at IOA, but yeah, I'm really pleased they did it, I think it looks great, this does, and that much so, I'm going to take you all on for a ride, can you coming on again? Oh, I'm not going to do it again, I'm going to go and have a sit there. But... <laughs> you go and have a nice chill in the shade, I will do. I'll take you all on with a ride cam POV, home cracking. And here we go then, straight that round, walk on for another ride here on Kraken. Oh, I do love it. Hey. Yeah, I'm so pleased they made the decision to get rid of the VR that they added quite a few years ago now as well. I'd imagine that really slowed down the throughput. It's great just coming on it like this. Good old flawless. And I'll tell you what, that sun today, it is hot. Definitely the hottest day of our trip so far. Infinity Falls is open. Probably have a bit queue, but we're going to have a look at that down there. Probably next. We're going to make the most of that. Climbing up the lift hill. It's worth pointing out because it's a hallow screen night. Some of the rides are actually closing at 5.30, which is quite a lot of the park, even though it's open till 7. So I'm not a huge fan of that. Obviously, you don't mind parks doing Halloween events, but it is a shame when it impacts a normal operating day. So bear that in mind if you are coming on the days when hallow screen is running. But here we go. The old whippersnapper. Cracker. Right, but I'm glad they allow it. It's out of that ride, you hit the brake run, and oh, blimey, what a coaster. Oh, another excellent ride there on Kraken here at SeaWorld Orlando. Brilliant coaster that is, so forceful. Just thought I'd show you this nice artwork that they've got outside here. I never noticed this before, so maybe it's new. Yeah, that is fantastic, look at that. The Kraken stealing all the coaster tractors there, wrapping itself around it. Now, as much as it's currently home to no rides, I really do like this Antarctica themed area of the park. I think it really does look the part as you make your way around here. And of course, this is where you used to get on the dark ride just down here, which was fantastic. Trackless dark ride with the penguins. And yeah, I really enjoyed that. But yeah, now you queue up just to go into the penguin exhibit. And I think a lot of people who maybe not been for quite a few years think they're queuing up for a ride, but they're not. Literally all these people are just queuing to go through the penguin exhibit. <laughs> they're queuing to see penguins. Yeah, that is the key for it. That's the thing. I think people think that it's a ride like it used to be. Yeah, I mean, they do make it clear here, Penguin Exhibit, but then you've got still got the sign for Empire of the Penguin over there, so obviously a lot of people think that that's a ride, but no, literally, it's just the Penguin walkthrough around there. But of course, that, this is going to change next year when they do open the new coaster. I mean, this is a dead end now at the moment, but yeah, you've got the coaster construction site around here. And yeah, like I said, I believe it's going to have some indoor scenes and then also come outside around here as well. Yeah, hence why they've cleared a lot of the trees. We'll just have a look down here. Yeah, this themed area is great, and I really liked the dark ride. Don't get me wrong, it was nothing spectacular. Um, but they used to have two dark rides here. There was Empire of the Penguin, 
and wild arctic and currently there's no dark rides in the park and that's where it really lacks i think personally instead of spending the money on another coaster a dark ride should have been the right call dark ride so much, especially when it's so hot going inside a nice ac building really makes it yeah and it fit with this area so nice yeah, yeah, I mean, there was rumours about why it closed, and one of the ones that I heard, I don't know how true this is, it might not be, it's speculation, but during the pandemic, uh, obviously, you know, theme parks are left abandoned for quite some time. Apparently, the ride vehicles for this, the trackless ride vehicles, got left inside there, and they got freezing cold, and by the time it came to reopen after the pandemic, the whole ride system was broke. They couldn't freeze them out apparently that's what i heard it broke the ride system but you don't know it's rumors it's speculation that could be a load of rubbish but it would make sense because it wasn't even that old of a ride this would they really have wanted to do that uh, so i think that's probably what happened but yeah they are building uh, that new coaster which will kind of be round here kind of round the side like we saw with the construction fence but the area is lovely it's probably my favorite themed part of the park because it's very unique having a cold themed area like this especially in orlando but yeah, I just feel sorry for people who think they're queuing up for a ride when really you're just going through the walk through the penguin. So bear that in mind. Yeah, and here's another look at the back of the construction area for that new B&M family coaster. It still seems weird saying that. But obviously, it's a term that we've all become more used to now, especially with Mandrel Mayhem that owned at Chessington back in the UK this year. B&M really starting to go more into the family thrill market. So we're starting to make our way now round to Infinity Falls. We're expecting this to be really busy, so we're going to have a look around there and see. Yeah, I'm not too sure what the status update is for the Sky Tower just here. Last time we were at this park, it was open, but as an upcharge, which I don't really agree with, because really it's just a normal ride in the park. Don't understand why it was an upcharge. Yeah, I've not seen it operating all day today, so I'm not too sure if they permanently closed it or not. I'm really not sure, or if it just closed today, or maybe because we're now into September, it's because of staffing. But like I say, it was an upcharge anyway, which it really shouldn't have been. 15 minute wait for Mako, not too bad considering how busy it is down here now. Very high capacity though, it runs up to three trains. I think it's on two today. But still 15 minutes for a major coaster on a busy day. Not too bad at all. I mean, you thought if we had these crowds at Alton Towers back home, and then it'd be on 60 to 90 minutes, you know. So the fact that we've got some quieter rides is fantastic yeah they've got some good capacity here at this part now and the operations are okay they're not like amazing and they're not poor they're just kind of standard operations at this part but yeah i do feel like the rapids is going to be very busy it's a popular attraction hot day saturday this could be over an hour oh no it's not looking good for infinity falls that's it they've actually drained the trough around here it did open when i was looking on the app but obviously they're having some issues with it yeah all the water Stop coming down the drop just over there too. Oh no, hopefully we get it later on, but you gotta think, like I say, some rides are closing at 5.30 because of Hallow Scream, 90 minutes prior to park close. We might not get it. Yes! Oh, oh no. I'm so pleased. I love Infinity Falls I as well. I get so Oh, it'd be a shame, but we're gonna have a walk down this way. We got the Sesame Street area, which is good around here. So we're gonna have another stroll through there. Oh, it's not looking good for this one today, viewers. Not looking good, oh no. This looks like it could be down for the day now. And the sign's been wheeled out. Brilliant. Here we go, oh, the sign's been wheeled out. We'll go and ask the member of staff over here, but we'll probably get the usual kind of spiel, so they're not too sure. But so uh, yeah, here's a look at the entrance sign. Yeah, the sign's come out. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna be getting Infinity Falls today. Oh, it's a shame. And as we make our way over to Sesame Street land, just thought I'd show you this sign. Yeah, this shows the attractions that are closing early due to how low screen tonight. And yeah, as you can see, it's quite a lot of the park. What's quite interesting with this though, is to put Wild Arctic on it. That hasn't been an attraction here for quite a few years as a prize. Have you got that on the sign? Seems really weird that. Yeah, let's make our way down here. I do really like this area of the park. Carousel off to the left. This would be a perfect place for a dark ride. Something similar to what they've got at Port Aventura World in Spain would be fantastic down here. An interactive shooting dark ride. Things of Sesame Street, they've got it at PA and it works amazing. One of those down here would be great and it would complement this family area really nicely. There's Cookie Monster over there. Here he is. Oh, he loves his cookies. I'd like that, but here that would probably cost about 50 to 60 dollars, I reckon, for that size cookie. It's a 5% surcharge and tax. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, you got the little junior coaster just over there as well. I do really like this area of the park. All these buildings are very nice. Did a good job with all the exterior and on the inside it's retail, 
and also along with that a meet and greet location. And yeah, I do like how it feels like you're actually walking down the street here as well, walking down all the roads. Yeah, really nice splash pad over there as well for kids. Rocking tug and a couple of other small rides. So yeah, this is where that dart ride Wild Arctic used to be. Of course, it's a scary attraction now, but yeah, it said it's gonna close early, but the actual attraction hasn't operated for years. I really don't know why. That's on the sign, surely they could have just put a sticker on it and covered it up. But yeah, Wild Arctic used to be here. That's what they're lacking massively here now. They've got the water rides, they've got the coasters. They really need some indoor attractions and maybe even a couple of flats would be nice as well, some thrill flats. That is much needed, especially when it's so hot. Yeah, I mean, we're feeling it today, aren't we? Oh, today. it is baking, like the sweat is dripping off like me, literally. Yeah, like my forehead is so hot. <laughs> Crazy, but yeah, we can't complain really. We've done well for weather. Like I say, we had one day of storms and that was the day we weren't filming. Like, it worked out great. Well, we've just done a couple more re-rides over on Pipeline, the surf coaster. And like I said earlier on, make sure you check out yesterday's vlog here on the channel. If you haven't already seen it, with on-ride POVs now review of the new ride for 2023. Yeah, it's approaching 4.30 now. There's only an hour left until probably 70% of the rides in the park are closing. But look at the crowd levels. I really do feel like closing it off early for the Halloween event isn't a great idea. I mean, really, they need to be starting the Halloween event later um, and not closing the park um, at 5.30. I mean, yeah, it's advertised till 7, but showing at 5.30 lots of the rides when it's this busy is not great, really. Oh, I was getting all excited then for Infinity Falls. We came around the corner, saw the water flowing again, and thought, here we go, this is it. It literally sounds like they're just shutting it down again now. I mean, it's not opened up. Well, here we go, yeah, starting to drain the trough again just here. Oh, it's a shame, we're not gonna get it. There's like an hour left until this ride was scheduled to close. It's been having some problems this has, hasn't it, today? Well, it's only a 15 minute wait for Mako, so another couple of laps around on here and make the most of it. So like I say, this will be closing in less than an hour's time, and we will head down to Manta shortly as well. That's open until seven, so that's the reason we've not done that yet. Of course, the flying coaster. Head down there and give it a go. But yeah, we get back on Mako. And we'll do the little shark aquarium actually just behind it as well. It's a really nice walkthrough, the shark encounter, after we've had our ride. It's got a moving walkway in there. It's like Minion Blast. We waited about 20 minutes there for another ride on Mako. Absolutely spectacular B&M Hypercoaster. I am sweating though, oh, just standing up there in that station, Honestly, Charlotte. I am so hot. Oh, it was good to just have a ride on there and get the breeze, wasn't oh, it? Oh, it was lovely. Oh, there we go. Right, we're going in the shark encounter now. It's really nice in here. It's a good walk through. Wow, look at this in here. It's a really cool use of projections. And of course, walking through in here, which is really nice. What I love about this is how wide the tunnel is. You see all the fish and the sharks. The what? The pork fish. There you go. <laughs> and of course, we've still got our ride coming up on Manta shortly as well, the BM Flyer. So stay tuned for that. Yeah, it's massive in here. Charlotte stands down there, though. You get a good idea on the scale of it in here. Massive. Always think this looks cool. And yeah, if you're getting really hot, the air conditioning in here is perfecto. Another view looking into that first tank. Just over there as well. I really like these, aren't they pretty? Really nice they are. I do like a good aquarium. This is a really cool effect. The shark just coming across the wall there. It's coming for you, Charlotte, it's coming. <laughs> Now normally this would be the point where you come on to a moving walkway, but yeah, unfortunately, it's not working, so we just gotta walk down here today, Charlotte. Oh, I was hoping to recreate Minion Blast down at Universal. And of course, we've got a full review there, here on the channel. My trip to Universal Orlando Resort. I like how Charlotte's looking at the op powers down there. Oh, get working. Trying to get in action there, boy. <laughs> really nice in here. 
Oh, and there's a the big shark. Look at him. Wow. Oh, it's weird walking down here. Do you just feel it like still kind of moving when you walk? That made no sense, did it? <laughs> oh, look at him. Hammerhead shark. Hammerhead turn on Mako. Wow. Oh, look at the face on these just there. Oh, that's like my face when 70% of the park shuts 90 minutes before park close. It's a very nice walkthrough attraction that is. Yeah, it's a shame the moving walkway wasn't working. But still, it was nice to go through there. And yeah, of course, we've still got one more major coaster to ride and that's what we're heading to now. It is, of course, Manta 2009 B&M Flying Coaster. And yeah, this is very forceful, isn't it, Charlotte? It's so intense. This is the pretzel loop on here. It's like blackout. Yeah, four inversions on here. And yeah, the pretzel is literally just here on the right-hand side. Very intense. I'd love to get you on Tatsu's one at some point oh, in the future. Yeah, as you would have got on that, but the taxi one is oh, too much actually, I think. Yeah, I like hey, but yeah, in this humidity and heat today, yeah, here it is, the pretzel loop. You can't see it that well because it's got all these up. Um, I say unfortunately, but then you look at all the bits that it's caused, probably a good thing. Yeah, it's massive this is. You get some good views going up the lift hill. I always think it's quite an imposing ride. Like, it looks massive on the skyline here. It's amazing to work up the lift hill. Manta. Towards the end of our day, it's a 40 minute advertised wait. What I do really like about this one though, they've thought about everything with the queue line. It's got an aquarium in, and most of it's indoors. How lovely is this round here? Oh, I mean, you compare the theming of this compared to like the surf coast that they just put in pipeline. Yeah, and this is like incredible round here. I mean, pipeline's beautiful with its uh, lake next to it. But yeah, I really like this queue line all the way down here even like the entrance sign it's just iconic over there isn't it and as you make your way into the queue i think charlotte this has been overestimated yeah i think because they've got the halloween event they want to get people out of the park so you see that at a lot of parks not just here all the way back down here before. yeah i have oh look at the aquarium the air conditioning in here is lovely oh this is definitely not 40 minutes no. yeah they're just a typical kind of uh, advertise it higher than it actually is. A lot of parks do that near the end of the day, but especially here when they've got an upcharge event. Don't really agree with that, but you know, because a lot of people will walk past and think, oh, I'm not waiting 40 minutes. There's the rays in there. And that's the thing, the park's busy, but look at it, no one's coming in because they've advertised it higher. And that's what the park want, you know. But yeah, I don't really agree with that. It is beautiful though, this queue line. Oh yeah, this is like 15 minutes or something. It could be less than that. We're not even by the big tank around here? No. no. Last time we were here, we were in this room at least. We didn't wait that long. That is stunning though, isn't it? And this is a queue line for a coaster. Mm -hmm. Look at him down there. Absolutely gorgeous. It's going to have a ride. How many fish is he there? Wow. <laughs> it's definitely not 40 minutes. He's nowhere near. Literally, just gone past the merge point. Straight up into the station, five minutes and we're on. We're straight into an air gate.
I promise it will get better. <laughs> We're down towards the back, row seven, we're on. Oh, Manta. We were all set up for a 40 minute wait there, but I'm happy we didn't. And yeah, we did check Infinity Falls again. Sadly, not operating. Charlotte's so disappointed. <laughs> Great view. Really high this is. Here we go. Manta. Oh, it's gonna be intense. This is it. Oh! Oh wow! That is crazy. Wow. Oh look at the footers for the new coaster. Wee! That was exciting. Smooth though. All the tanks for the Aquarius. My favourite part of the ride. Whee! Oh, I love that. Brilliant with the war effect. Whoa! You've got a light sprinkle there as well. Oh, there we go. Oh, that was nice. Quite refreshing as well with the water there. Oh, that was good. Nice breeze on there as well, which was fantastic. Our final ride of the day, the B&M Flyer. There we go, look at all the tanks just there. Now operations haven't been brilliant today. However, I just want to give a shout out to the team here on this ride because yeah, they've got the train set out pretty quick, waiting on the brake run there for about 40 seconds, which is fine. When it becomes, you know, a few minutes, especially in this heat, it's not very comfortable. So yeah, big well done to the staff. You don't want to be waiting ages on one of these, especially in this heat. Fascinating ride system there, isn't it? Of course, developed by John Wardley as well, with the first one being air at Alton Towers. And back down we come. This one hasn't got the floor that lowers though, if you've noticed. It's just got a, that hole in the floor. Well, we walked straight onto Manta just there. And you know what? When it's a walk-on ride, not complaining about that. I'm not really a huge fan of flying coasters in general. However, uh, this is one of the better B&M ones in my opinion. Oh my God, the pretzel on there. I could feel like the pressure on my head. The rest of the layout is absolutely great, but that pretzel is so intense. It's a good long ride as well, that, isn't it? I do like Manta, but it's, that, it's just that pretzel that gets me. Yeah, what I do like about Manta is how you kind of swoop it out over all these trees and buildings. And yeah, it's a really good layout. It's not too compact. And you often find that with flying coasters. With this, you're zooming around everywhere and over the water. Um, looks fantastic. I mean, it's one of the most iconic photo shots in the park. It's like down at Bush Gardens, Cumber, uh, that shot of the uh, interlocking court screws. With this, the shot of the park is just around that corner there, of course, as uh, Manta makes its way round with all of the uh, water effects just down there as well. Well, yeah, it is a great ride, even though I'm not a huge fan of flying coasters. Apart from Fly at Fantasialand, that is. I love that one.
And that brings us to the end of our day here at SeaWorld Orlando. It's been great to get back on some of our favorite rides here today, including the absolutely awesome Mako. I absolutely love Mako. It's my favorite ride at this park. Oh, it is absolutely brilliant. Yeah, B&M High from my favorite here too. I could sit on that thing all day. Absolutely fantastic. Really nice layout. And for 200 foot, they got so much out of that as well. Got back on Kraken. Love that coaster so much. Very intense, very enjoyable ride. Not so much for Charlotte. No, I'm not a massive fan of that. I love the color scheme of it, but it's just too intense. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the coaster what started it all really in Florida for like big coasters, you know. So I'm glad to continue to expand with new coasters. Uh, and of course, along with that as well, um, got back on the flying coaster, Manta, which was fantastic. Just walking around the park, taking it all in um, has been really nice. Operations haven't been amazing really, other than at the end there, have they? No, they haven't, but it is what it is. Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, but it's great how they allow on-ride POVs here. So we've got lots of rider cam footage and POVs and all the different rides. And of course, we had our first rides on pipeline so check out yesterday's vlog if you haven't already seen that we've got the on-ride footage and rider cams from that as well our first reactions it's completely changed the entrance though here hasn't it it has it looks fantastic on the skyline yeah you can see it all there behind us really nice entrance coast to this to this park look forward to returning in the future and seeing what the new bnm family coast is going to be like but they really need some more indoor attractions here don't oh, they definitely when it's so hot it's just nice to go inside and to a dart ride to cool down you used to have two dart rides here one wasn't very good but one was pretty good uh, but i I'd like to see them have something new indoors. Um, they've built some great coasters. I think it's time to slow that down after the new one next year. Some more indoor rides from the stormy days and also as well, um, just for, of course, when it's really hot like today and the humidity. But uh, there we go. Thanks for joining us here at SeaWorld Orlando. Great day getting back on lots of rides. And that leaves with one final thing to say. Get, Get out there and keep, keep on, on riding. riding. See you in the next vlog.